Stanford, a village that once lay in the heart of Norfolk's Breckland, one of five thriving rural communities evacuated in 1942 to make what many consider to be one of the finest training areas which the British Army possesses. It remains today beautiful and unspoiled, largely as it was less the communities 50 years ago. It is a site of special scientific interest, abounding in wild and plant life, where many species are fighting their last battle. Unspoilt by pylons or motorways, it is one of the best infantry training grounds in the world, bearing a marked similarity in some areas to the North German plain. Stanford provides a variety of terrain and vegetation, ranges and facilities. It has accommodation unparalleled on any other training area in regular use. Between 60 and 80,000 troops use the training area each year for up to half a million man training days. In spite of this, many of the facilities are underused primarily because of ignorance. This video will demonstrate to potential users the wide range of activities that can be undertaken. Although it is one of the smaller principal training areas, some 28,000 acres or 45 square miles in extent, it is possible to train simultaneously up to 10 company battery type subunits. A coordinated exercise could accommodate approximately double this amount. The 5,500 acres of woodland are similar to many of the woods in Germany, and some of them are not dissimilar to parts of the Far East. The more open areas are very like the heathlands of North Germany and the arable very similar to the North German plain. Open leafy woods are ideal for logistic units and echelons. Transport aircraft fly in and out of Watton Airfield some four miles to the northeast. And Harriers can land on the specially built Harrier Strip. As well as being superb for all forms of dry training, an extensive range complex also exists. The gallery range at Thetford provides facilities for basic individual firing. More advanced live firing can take place on the moving target range, the individual battle shooting range, or on one of the two close quarter battle ranges. The field firing range at Great Car is a set-piece section fire and movement range with in-position electric targets and radio-controlled moving targets which fall when hit. The targetry on this range can be beefed up with radio-controlled targets cited as the unit request. More advanced field firing can be conducted on Mortimer's on which a platoon can live fire.
All static targets are radio controlled. And radio controlled moving targets are provided to add additional interest. Two platforms on either flank can fire GPMG on fixed lines overhead to add to the realism. Battle simulation can be used on any range. The field firing range at Frog Hill can be set up as the unit wishes and can be used for platoon fire and movement live firing or equally well as a sniper range where very realistic training can be conducted. One of the best platoon and defence field firing ranges in existence is situated at Robins Lodge. A comprehensive trench system enables a platoon to remain in this position for as long as the unit wishes. Patrol activity incorporating live firing ambushes can take place at night. Two hard targets on either flank enable tank patrols to be conducted and the position itself is ideal for practicing such procedures as casualty evacuation, resupply and relief in the line. Plans exist to electrify this range in due course. The anti-tank range at Hopton Point is suitable for all platoon anti-tank weapons and contains a variety of hard targets and moving targets. Facilities do not exist for Milan. The central impact area may be used by battalion mortars and by artillery firing up to 155 mm shells which detonate on impact. Units are encouraged to run their own field firing exercises which can be conducted up to company level using mortars and artillery in support. The staff at the range office are always willing to advise and to assist. No, no, uh, Charlie, the registration is Charlie 863. The digging of defensive positions is allowed almost anywhere on the training area, and engineers can lay mines or carry out more extensive excavations. Other facilities include two assault courses and a confidence area used largely by recruits or training establishments. Two dropping zones, one for a company and one for up to a battalion, are in regular use. Water courses exist for bridging and river crossing activities. Thirty-five skills houses are regularly used in fibula type exercises and for Northern Ireland training. A full Fibua village is being constructed. Imaginative and realistic NBC training can be conducted in the NBC compound, 
where facilities exist for warning and monitoring, decontamination, NBC recce, and a full-scale NBC exercise, including a battle run. Lecture theatres and cinemas can be used to complement all training. Two separate underground cellar complexes, each with facilities for plugging in generators, are suitable for use by tactical headquarters up to brigade size. A smaller one is suitable for company or battalion TAC HQ. An area dedicated to training assault pioneers is also set up and these skills can be put into practical effect at many places on the training area. Units wishing to stay longer than a few days at Stanford can be accommodated in one of the five training camps. All have separate officers and sergeants messes, centrally heated barrack accommodation, modern cookhouses, and at Retham, NAFI facilities are available. Football pitches and facilities for other outdoor activities exist, and many parts of the local woodlands have been specially mapped for orienteering. Those wishing to participate in field sports can do so, and information is available from HQ Stanta on fishing and shooting. Stanford is carefully managed as an estate by the Ministry of Defence Lands Department under the auspices of the Defence Land Agent in Cambridge and the local staff at West Tofts. The policy is to produce the best mixture of terrain and vegetation suitable for military training. This includes the arable parts of the training area where full tactical training, including digging, may take place. Farmers are not compensated for any damage caused unless it's willful. The military and civilian staff responsible for running the training area work very closely with the local conservation group and the Nature Conservancy Council to continue to safeguard the interests of the plant and wildlife which is threatened. Stanford provides a comprehensive package for the training of all arms in realistic and challenging surroundings, which can be significantly enhanced by the use of imaginative and careful planning. The range staff will always assist if required to do so. We look forward to seeing you.